his own son, who died in one of the Star Wars, one of the numerous battles, his son never saw the palace that was created on Planet X, but his grandson was raised in it. This young grandson, as soon as he became aware of who he was and who he was descended from, knowing that his place was in the heavens in the Sirius star system, became very upset. He found himself deprived of the throne of a star system that was a power second only to one. Disappointed, upset, he vowed revenge. His grandfather passed away, and he found himself in control of the new solar system. During the course of his upbringing, he enrolled in several institutions, learning institutions, in which he was able to master warfare in space, in the seas, and on land. This young man became a master, an overlord of the wars, uh, of the war technologies of the Syrian people. The single highest honor that can be afforded anyone of his caliber was Zu. It is the practice in many, many ancient societies from Egypt and beyond that the king or the queen ascending to the throne would double his name. This implied great power. It is the same thing as if you were to say a big rock versus a big, big rock. This king of the solar system, Bod, who was given the title Zhu, took it to heart. And when he became king, he referred to himself as Zhu Zhu. Zhu Zhu. The palace in which he resided was known as Ambu. Now, this is a word you can look up in Egyptian hieroglyphs dictionaries. I strongly recommend E.A. Wallace Budge. The word is Ambu, A-M-B-A-H-I-U. It literally means palace or gathering place. This palace was given the name of the grandfather who originally created the colony. It was called Al-Ambu. According to tradition, King Zuzu should have granted his name to the palace, replacing his grandfather's, but he refused to do so. And instead, he simply added his name at the end of the palace's name. Al-Ambu became known as Al-Ambu Zu. In time, this young king, Zuzu, declared war against the kings of Sirius. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the beginning of a story that we all will recognize. Because what we have is a young king, a god in his own way, who is known as Zuzu or Zuz, who resided on Mount Alambuzu, Olympus. I strongly suggest that you read the Greek Theogony. It is a story in which the legends of King Zeus resided on Mount Olympus and how he declared war against the olden gods of Othyris. Othyris is recognized in Egypt as Osiris. Osiris is an Egyptian word which means the star Sirius. I am going to suggest to you that if you take a look at the Theogony, you will find confirmation of the story, that once there was a king named Zeus who rebelled against the olden gods and created his own palace, his own empire, in a tiny little solar system known as Bod. And in the solar system Bod, we would later find planets known as Venus, Mars, Jupiter, Uranus, Neptune, and Saturn. Ladies and gentlemen, The stories about Zeus and Era and Mount Olympus are true. In time, however, the Syrian king, the Orion queen, combined their forces and they descended upon the solar system and this rebel king and they destroyed his empire. They destroyed the planet on which he resided. Planet X, known as Tiamat, 
You can find this in the Babylonian creation epics. You can find this in numerous books. Again, I strongly recommend Mr. Sitchin's work, Zachariah Sitchin and the Twelfth uh, Planet, the Earth Chronicles. Tiamat, Planet X, the home of Mount Olympus, was totally and completely obliterated. All that remains in this day and age is the asteroid belt. The colonies on the moons of Jupiter and on some of the other planets were completely destroyed. Many of the residents of the planets of the White Sands and the planet of the Red Sands fled underground. They removed themselves into the caverns, into the underground structures, and they survived the destruction of the surface of their planet. Later on, some of the survivors would surface. They would attempt to rebuild their planet. They would attempt to rebuild at least a small city, leaving a monument of sorts to their civilization. What I am going to suggest to you is that the face on Mars is one of those testimonial structures. That they are going to find that this structure is billions of years old and that it will at some point and in some fashion refer back to the legends of the great god Zeus and Mount Olympus. Hi, I'm Rod Remlin, and the name of my new show is called The Last Outpost and will soon be airing live programming. So keep checking back for announcements of such sometime over the coming weeks. Also, don't forget to call Water Oz at 800-547-2294 and let them know what you think of the reruns. And make sure you order a bottle or two of the many fine mineral water products they carry. If you mention that you heard this ad on the last outpost, you will be given a 5% discount at the time of your order. And now, back to the show. That civilization appears to have died away. Richard Hoagland's work and several of the others who are researching in uh, the face on Mars, I believe, have been distracted. They have been sidetracked and are looking at the moon. It is not that the moon itself does not have anomalies and questions that must be answered, but I am suggesting that we are leaving something extraordinarily crucial in the evolution and the discovery of the truth and that is that singular structure known as the face on Mars. I am also going to suggest that we are going to find that very, very same structure on Venus. Somewhere on that barren, hot planet, we're going to find the very, very same structure. It is, to me, a curious coincidence and a, a grand testimonial to the work of Mr. Hoagland and the others. They have discovered that the face on Mars is accompanied by a pyramid city, they refer to it as Cydonia. They have also discovered that the floor plan of the pyramid in the city, Cydonia, match almost identically a tiny village in England known as Avebury, down to the moat, the structures, and the floor plan. This goes beyond coincidence. I strongly and highly recommend any and all of the work on the face on Mars by Mr. Hoagland and other fine authors. This is a clue, and I believe will someday confirm the story of the existence of Zeus. The solar system felt the wrath of the Sirius star system and the Orion star system. They completely obliterated life, the forests, the trees, the plants, the animals, and the beings who lived on Venus, who lived on Mars, and who lived on the moons of Jupiter. The moon and planet Earth are the survivors of this devastation. I recommend the 12th planet in the Earth Chronicles by Mr. Sitchin, in which he very, very confidently proposes the scenario that the remnants of planet Tiamat were forced inward and caught in the third orbit known as planet Earth and the moon. It is a strong book. It is a very convincing book. I highly recommend his work. I recommend, if you can, the Terra papers in which we add other details that we believe are missing in the 12th planet. Uh, I do not wish to elevate myself, but uh, suggest that our work will, wor will work hand-in-hand hand and co uh, coincide with Mr. Sitchin's work. 
What I have suggested in the last half hour or so is that our solar system was once thriving with ancient civilizations, ancient structures, and wisdom of the star beings. It was through revenge and the seeking of profit. It was about wealth and power that created the destruction of our solar system. I strongly suggest a book by a Mr. Van Flandern. I believe it's called Dark... I'm sorry, Dark Matter Missing... I, I apologize. If you will call in the morning, we will give you the title. Uh, Dark Matter Missing Universe. My apologies to the gentleman because I should have had it with me. In which Mr. Flandern takes a very, very close look at the asteroids and comets who are flying in and out of our solar system. And he also examines with great care the geography, the geology of the planets of our solar system. It appears through his work that he can verify that there must have been an explosion, an enormous explosion of some sort in the vicinity of what is now the asteroid belt. Should such an explosion have taken place, it would be a very safe assumption to suggest that the moons, the planets, if they were facing the explosion, that they should be darkened or blackened on one side more heavily than another. In other words, to simplify it, they would have been scorched. They would have been covered with the stuff of the explosion. With great detail and an extraordinarily plausible argument, Mr. Flan Mr. Flandern, Ben Flandern, proves, or at least with the evidence available, strongly suggests that just this event has occurred. The moons are blackened, the planets are pockmarked and darkened on one side. In other words, our own science has shown that an explosion must have taken place in the vicinity of the asteroid belt. But there is one curious little tidbit, one tiny little clue that simply does not seem to fit. Under normal circumstances, the explosion of a planet, whether it had been from an asteroid, whether it had been from some sort of internal reaction, there would be certain traces and certain evidence. However, if this explosion occurred as it appears to have done so, we have some evidence that suggests the existence of antimatter in the explosion. Antimatter is not going to develop from a natural explosion, whether it be an asteroid, a comet, or internal causes. It is this one tiny little factor that seems to plague Mr. Van Flandern, and I respect highly his work. 